Hi, everybody. Welcome from me, Charles Cockerton, President of the British Benevolent Society. Two weeks ago, we had a conversation with BBS member Karen Beale, who kindly shared all her tips and travel experiences for recent travel during the pandemic between California and the UK. We have had very positive feedback from our listeners, and I'm really pleased to welcome Karen back to Marin. She's just arrived back from her trip last week. Hi, Karen. Hi. We're delighted to have you back. How are you doing? Yeah, doing well, thank you. Yes. Enjoying the Excellent. weather. <laughs> I bet. Was it raining when you were back in England? The last couple of days, yeah, but the rest of it was good. Oh, that, that's good. Well, thank you again for coming back. Um, so how, how was the trip? It'd be really good. We'd really love to hear what's changed, if anything, from the travel experience, and in particular, if you've got any new tips for travellers considering or having to make the make the journey back to the UK. So, um, should we, I mean, maybe start with, has anything changed here on the American side of things, get the airport in California, for example? Yeah, so um, when I booked my trip back, um, I didn't have a choice of a direct flight, so I still had to change this time in Washington. Um, the airport was much busier, but still very easy to social distance. Um, pretty much everyone had masks this time um, but they wore them most of them wore them off their nose which was the really oddest thing so the airport it was very interesting that people were wearing masks half on half off but easy to social distance easy to get on the plane etc this time and i traveled with the same carrier not all the middle seats were free on the inter internal flights and that was a big change that had not been advertised nor was that communicated to me which i was really disappointed in and when I got on the plane this time, there was somebody in my seat. So I obviously explained that I couldn't get into the seat because somebody was there. And they told me, just go move him. It's fine. <laughs> and I said, no, 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 I'm not, not today. I'm, I'm not comfortable with that. I, I actually got this airline carrier because you clean the planes regularly. And I would really like a clean seat. So honestly, that took about 15 minutes to sort out. And what I found out is that the airline had just put everybody on furlough the day before. So um, the airline staff were a little um, less accommodating than they would be normally, but we ended up sorting it out. I ended up with a free middle seat next to me. But what I would caution everybody to do is speak to their airline just before they go. There are well-documented um, airlines who are keeping middle seats free. And the good news is SFO, if you travel from there, now has a direct flight to London. And once I got off in Washington, the next flight was almost empty. So the international flights are, are, are very, very um, uh, low on people, low on, on passengers. So you, you have a lot of room to socially distance and things. The domestic flights seem to be filling up now. So just proceed with caution. So traveling from California, it sounds like if, if you're going from the Bay Area now with the flight available, would you you go from SFO? I'd go direct from a SFO. Yeah, I definitely do that, um, especially because because they're so empty, um, I'm not as worried about things like the restrooms and things like that. Again, you know, we know more about COVID now. We know that you have to be in a place for a certain period of time in terms of viral load. So just going and using the restroom on a plane isn't going to necessarily concern somebody as much as it would have done at the beginning. And I think it's more important to have, you know, 12 to 16 seats around you empty, which is what I had on my international leg of the journey. Right. So what was it like landing back in... In, in the UK, has it changed at all there, the coming off the aeroplane, going through customs? It, yeah, is it quite different going through customs this time um, because everybody had to have the um, form downloaded beforehand or have filled it in on the plane. Um, I had some technical difficulties downloading it beforehand, so asked to fill it in on the plane. They told me I didn't need to because I was a British citizen. I thought that was a little odd. I got off the plane, of course I did need to fill it in. It's a track and trace form. Um, and it looked like everybody else had got the same message. I had technical problems. So there was, you know, hundreds of people, very distanced, but all filling in forms before they could go through immigration. So you had to fill in where you were going to stay, where you're going to be quarantined, all your contact details, um, and the reason for your visit. Um, so I felt that that was much more buttoned down than last time. I didn't mind doing all of that because I think it's really sensible that people do quarantine when they first land in a country. Um, so that was the big difference. Where, where do you find that form before you, you, you mentioned you filled this out before you, you got on the airplane or, and it's also available on the flight itself. Is that, is that? Yes. 
they give it out on the flight itself. Um, and if they tell you as a British citizen, you don't need it, that's incorrect. You do need it. Um, before you go, your airline should email you. Mine didn't. So I actually went online and there's, you can go onto your airline, say where you're traveling to, and they give you the form to fill in. But there was a technical difficulty, apparently with everybody, because everybody who got to Heathrow had, appeared to have the same issue. Um, so worst case scenario, don't worry, you can just do it when you land, but it will delay you by 10, 15 minutes. Yeah. Okay. And then for you, you were heading from the airport up to the family back up in the Midlands. Um, so, I mean, the prep was going through collecting baggage, all of that stuff pretty quick. Um, it was a customs bit. Great. Yeah. Customs bit was the only delay. Everything else was really quick. Um, but what I would say about um, both Heathrow Airport and, and then when I first, you know, my, my sister came and picked me up and when we um, got up to where I was staying in Knoll, in, in, just outside Solly Hall, it seemed way more relaxed this time and there also seemed a a real sense of you know we're living with this and it's 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 not a big deal leicester was still locked down so you know um yeah. it, it felt like everybody's view was we've got this under control there was almost this sense of you know victory we've got this under control we feel feel good about you know continuing to social distance but not having to worry as much as my trip before where people were still on edge I would say um, it just felt much more relaxed it felt like a British summer even though you're having to social distance going down a high street as we came towards the uh, area where I was staying everybody was out eating out um, in outdoor restaurants everybody seemed happy there was nobody wearing masks which still freaks me out because I'm now so used to wearing a yeah. mask I find it odd um, but everybody just seemed to be getting on with normal life and that was kind of the theme the whole week i was there and you 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 went you went into self-quarantine in the yes so the, you were staying in a hotel rather than family i think you mentioned yeah, this time i stayed in a hotel and the reason for that is because i was going to a funeral and the event afterwards was at the hotel so if i'd have stayed with family in theory, I couldn't have gone to the event and I didn't want to break quarantine. I, I just wanted to follow the rules. It was just easier. Yeah. I think it's a responsible thing to do. So you are allowed to go to a funeral, even if you're in quarantine, there's about six or seven things that you can do. You can also stay over somewhere on your way to quarantine. I didn't need to do that. But um, so yes, I went to a hotel and quarantined. I asked for a separate a room outside. It's a country house hotel that all worked out really well. And all of the staff at the hotel when they came to the room um they all came masked and kind of in full ppe and i was really impressed and it took me about three days to understand that that was actually just for me like no one else in the hotel they were masked for but because i come from the us they were completely like freaked out about the fact that i could be this you know um super carrier so i didn't find it at all worrying because it was just normal i mean i i didn't i don't have no how, clean how many days in did you realize that they were making special treatment for you. It was the third day because the um, the second day was actually the funeral. We had the, the event afterwards um, at the same place. And I happened to mention how impressed I was that, you know, when it came to the room with room service or whatever. And, and later, you know, obviously there was staff coming around this event, which was outside and they didn't have any masks or PPE. So <laughs> I queried that and they said, oh, we only need it around you. So that was cool. And it, you were telling Jen Baker, who's also our executive director, who's joined us on the call as well, um, that the event afterwards, it was a gathering of 60 people in the, ho the hotel. So it sounds like gatherings of that, you know, large Stop. gatherings are being permitted within, within reason. Yeah, it appears to be, according to the um, outside space that someone has, and this is a big country hotel that had lots and lots of outside space, and it already had areas where there was fire pits and a few tables, fire pits and a few tables. So we could um, put different families together. So people who are in their bubble, if you like, sat in their bubble. Um, and that was really, I was really worried about that before I got to the UK, because I didn't know exactly how that was going to run, but they did it really well. Um, and everybody you know was distanced and, and respectful of each other but again no one had masks um which again coming from marine that's that's kind of an odd thing albeit that the uk started i think um this week um with the shops masking in shops and masking in uh on public transport and things and you mentioned families uh, had you 
either flying from California to London or back to California, are you noticing people traveling with young children at all or is it many, many Actually, others? Quite a bit. No, there's quite right. a lot of children. I mean, there were people who were going on vacation and things. Um, you know, I, I spoke to a couple of people from a distance um, uh, when we were waiting for baggage because I don't normally take baggage, but this time I did. Um, I spoke to somebody and they were going on vacation with their children um, and, and other people were passing through in transit, going over to other European places. I believe that Croatia has no quarantine. So I met somebody who was going to Croatia um, because there's no quarantine. They were going on vacation there. Um, now, I don't know whether they got questioned at immigration because clearly, you know, there are some rules around what you can and can't do, but yes, people are traveling. Um, more so this but, time than last time. Yeah. So coming back, I mean, ha, ha, the again, check the checking through process back in out of the UK, pretty straightforward. Any any form filling for the US or um, any any sort of brick walls being put up because you're traveling from the UK back back to back to America. I mean, has anything yeah. changed? Quite interesting. So first of all, there's more shops open at, at uh, Heathrow now. So normal, not all of the shops, but duty free was open, limited duty free. And you could eat and drink at Heathrow. There was only one place open before. There were quite a few. Um, it, I noticed Ted Baker was open. That just caught my eye because normal retail shops were open. Um, so that was interesting. When I got into Washington, because I cleared through Washington, it was really amazing to me. Um, you do get temperature taken you are asked to fill in a form which is manual the one in the uk is automatic and i i asked one of the gentlemen a question on the form he said well don't worry nobody reads them anyway and that was that was the cdc guy taking the form um and they were so relaxed and blasé which really shocked me because you know we're hearing of all the stats in the us and i i thought it'd be really buttoned down um but it, but it wasn't it was you know quite relaxed but then I got on the flight from Washington to SFO and there was no checking when you got off that at all. And again, what that tells me is, you know, you can travel state to state with no checking restrictions at all. Um, and yet when you're coming from a country that's got things under control, you know, my area was two people per 100,000 were being diagnosed with COVID. It was very low. And I'm coming back into an area where I don't know what we are at now, about 20 per 100,000 or something. And there was more concern about that than there was about the internal travel. So that that struck me as worrying, frankly. Yeah, I mean, you, the timing of your trip, uh, uh, the last time we spoke, well, before you you made made the flight back to England, things really changed here, didn't they, Jen? And, and I'd say in the last two weeks in, in California, it's like the place has got switched back on again and people have been every, everywhere. You go, everyone's wearing wearing masks and sort of gone back into full lockdown where, where you can see it. So that must have been quite quite a change just to there was a big see, thing. but also deal with just coming back from, you know, relative normality in, in, in the UK. Yeah, there was a big change. I got picked up by a friend who's in a bubble um, with us and, um, mm. you know, she was completely, um, you know, anxious again. And everybody I've met since has pretty much been, you know, kind of disheartened, I think is the word. It feels like, you know, there's a sense of we're losing the battle here. When I was in UK, it was all relaxed and we're winning the battle. So it, it literally was a tale of two cities, you know, two, two different worlds. Um, it was so much more relaxed and like a normal summer over there. I get back and it's like, oh my goodness, you can't have your haircut again. You can't eat out. You can't, you know, go out. Um, you, you can go out, but you're not supposed to go out. You can't go on vacation. I, I believe we're not allowed to go on vacation here. Um, it's very strange, honestly. It's, it's, it's a little... Um, what shall I say? Disorienting, I guess, because it feels so uh, different. Yeah, it's uh, well. Thank you for coming back, and these, that's just invaluable to hear and have have an up to date picture on on what travel is like. And it's positive news to hear that there's direct flights now from San Francisco back into the UK. I think that that's going to make things much much easier for people, particularly if the you're saying the the travel within the United States was the most stressful part. Definitely, uh, yes. yeah. Yeah. I think it's so, encouraging. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. In, in the two weeks that you've been away, just to talk a bit while we have the opportunity about the British Benevolent Society as a charity and our mission of providing aid and relief to Brits in, in need, this has been our busiest two weeks for a long, long, well, in, in living history, I would say. And 
coinciding with what the changes and people going back into lockdown here, we've had a real increase in in cases, a um, number of them really, really sad. And so, yeah, very serious, obviously, in, in dealing with those. And Jen, having you on the line, it'd be a great opportunity if maybe you could share some of those stories and just um, talk about the impact that the charity is making and, and, and how we're helping people right now. I think one of the things that I want to start repeating either in our newsletters or when we talk to um, people who are just becoming familiar with the BBS is not often do people associate um, Brit British expats as being vulnerable or who will, who will be in need. You maybe think of an immigrant population or people who are, again, from an expat population, but you don't think of Brits as needing help. But we've learned so much over the past three months that we already knew this, or sorry, more than three months, almost six months, but um, we had, to, we were, there are also direct flights from LA to Heathrow. And I know this because the BBS covered the cost of one flight for um, a Brit who was here on holiday and he suffered a stroke and, went his and was in hospital for a little while and then had to wait to become stable and fit to fly. And um, so we're helping him to return home. We're helping another Brit who was on an O-1 visa and she just can't um, wait any longer for her visa to be renewed and for her to be able to find legal work. So um, she's made the big decision to go home. Um, we have received requests from elderly Brits who can no longer afford to stay in their homes because their children were supporting them or supplementing their income. So in an indirect way, COVID is impacting their livelihood in so many ways, just ways that you can't imagine. But their their real needs, they're not um, superficial and out there. And, and through this, I, I've mentioned this in the newsletters, but also, you know, the COVID-19 COVID grants that we've provided have paid for medication and food and rent and gas and insurance, very practical things that people literally cannot live without, or they wouldn't have a roof over their head without this. And um, Charles, we were just talking about this before the call, and then I'll wrap it up, that um, $1,500 may not go far in the Bay Area or LA. And sadly too, we've now had two different recipients call back and just see if there's any way we could consider helping them again. Sadly, we can't, that's part of our, um, the rules and the guidelines of the, of the organization, but we're working to try and put them in contact with other organizations that might be able to help them. So it's a bleak report from the relief yeah. side of things. Well, thank you, thank you for that update, Jen. And it's. This is, this is really important where the community has to come together and you know we want everybody to be aware that the, the British Benevolent Society exists, but if anybody can find it in themselves uh, to, to maybe make a donation, it, it will go direct to helping fellow Brits less, less lucky right now. Um, and Karen, again, thank you for coming back on. It's not just about the financial aid, we're looking to provide really practical assistance to people or whether it's connecting individuals that might need different sorts of help or advice or tips. Um, and above all, remaining as positive as can be at, at this stage. And um, we will get through this and we will, we will come out the other end. So um, thank you both again very much. And Karen, it's great to see you and great to have you back. Thank you. Yeah, things will get better. We've got to hold on to that. Thank you, Karen. It's always Thanks, great to yeah. see you. Thanks, Charles. Thanks for the opportunity.